Hey, good morning, everyone. It's another Saturday, another day of learning awakes us all. And if you've ever wondered what it takes to achieve remarkable success to overcome obstacles and transform your performance in the face of big change, then you are in the right place. That's right. Welcome. To That's you. <laughs> Did it go? <laughs> I didn't hear you. Did you? Did your mic go? Uh, yeah, I'm here. Okay, How's all right. <laughs> okay, it's going great. I, I, I love, love uh, every 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 time we get on with Cat and myself, something happens. <laughs> so, uh, you so know. Um, well, my name is John Register. I'm a two time two sport Paralympic athlete and a combat army veteran, and I'm an author. And this is my co host, Cat Coppet. I'm an organizational consultant, author, and improviser. And together, we're going to be sharing our expertise and insights into how we can navigate change and find success in the face of adversity. That's right. We are up on Apple and Google and most places where you catch your podcasts. So if you're here live, that's awesome. If you want to listen back, um, you can find us anywhere you want. And so if you've been enjoying these episodes, please select the notification bell and share it with a friend. You know, uh, Kat is just an amazing uh, improviser. We're going to we'll probably play a game today because we always play a game on the show. Uh, and I love just kind of the, the, the playfulness of it. And we have a fantastic guest who is on today. So Kat, why don't you introduce, to, uh, introduce us to our guest? I am delighted to introduce everybody to Catherine Hover, who is a mother, a founder, a CEO of a number of companies and an investor and a purveyor of fun, which is our favorite thing. Um, she founded a paint and sip studio in the New York State Capital region and then scaled it to three locations within two years. Even more importantly and excitingly for me, she's created a place called Palette which is a co-working and community building space. And I know that it is transforming all sorts of lives in our region. So I'm delighted to introduce everyone to Catherine. Yay. <laughs> hi, hi, thanks so much for having me. This is exciting. Good, <laughs> Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Uh, you are coming to us, I see, for those of us, who, for those of you who can see, uh, Catherine is sitting in palette. She's got this beautiful butterfly background behind her. Um, and uh, I, I sort of feel like I want to just dive in and ask you about a little bit about your journey personally, which I know you have an amazing story and how you ended up founding palette. Yes. Yes. Awesome. Yeah. Like, let's just get right to it. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you know how transparent and open I am. So let's just get started. Yeah. So I, Moved up to the capital region um, 11, no, 12 years ago for my husband's job. And um, at the time, I would, I would consider myself rudderless and no idea what I wanted to do. And I was really using him as my North Star, like just to follow along um, in, his, in his path and what he had, you know, forged, forged in, ahead of us already. Um, and when I got to this little town called Saratoga Springs, um, which I had never heard of before in my life, aside from it being like a Disney resort named after it, um, I was like just hit with like this inspiration to bring something into the world that wasn't here yet. So um, I opened a paint and sip studio, which is exactly what it sounds like. It's a paint and sip studio. It's a bar and you show up and we have an artist there that walks you through step by step. And it's, it's really um, cool because I like to compare it to, you know, a comedy show or um, a going to the movies or going to like a nightlife sort of thing. And it's very entertaining. And actually, two <clears throat> excuse me, two of our artists have gone on to start like comedy careers, which is really cool. After just being up on a stage at Pain Sip and be and having to improvise and having to entertain a group of strangers and get them through this like this you know task at hand. So it has been it was like very transformative experience for me to be able to introduce the concept to the region. Um, and then and, you know simultaneously, I'm getting a lot more confidence in owning my own business, trying something new, um, lots of challenges on the way. And so it kind of like just led to something else. So, which is, which is what you said, a pallet. Um, it's a pallet community is what it's called. And it is a co-working space and community space female focused. Um, and it truly is the, the community that was missing in my life from having moved away from my family and my social, you know, safety net. 
um, while raising kids and, you know, navigating marriage and business ownership. I mean, I needed support around me and I didn't have it. So, um, yeah, if you're watching, I, I don't consider myself like a traditional, professional, serious businesswoman. So a lot of the co-working spaces that I was finding myself in, I, I just didn't really feel like they spoke to me or um, addressed my needs specifically. And I, I believed at the time that I couldn't be the only person that wasn't feeling supported in this way. So I set out to open up like a clubhouse co-working space that I could um, you know, execute my life in, whether it be I needed business support, whether I needed, you know, personal support system while I'm raising kids and stuff and family. So um, yeah, I just set out to do that and, and basically create what was missing in my life. Um, and, you know, I could, I could go on and on. So if you have questions, <laughs> we will. <laughs> hey, well, I, I guess, you know, where I want to know is how did you know that this was a community that was kind of starving and thriving or, you know, really trying to seek after this, you know, what, what gave you the prompts, the idea that I know that you needed it, but how'd you know that other people needed it as well? Yeah. So when with palette specifically, I really felt like I was, I was going down to the city for women's conferences and I was, I was really looking for something more, more like in my community that, um, that would actually keep me here, you know, cause I was starting to feel a little like hope, like a lot homesick and I was contemplating moving back and, you know, really just like blowing everything up that I'd built here with the, with the art studios, um, and my family, you know, three at the time I had two, um, daughters. And so I was like very like on the fence about like, what, what is keeping me here, you know? And if I don't have the support and I don't have people around me that really believe that I can go and do something more and have more impact impact, you know, what are we even doing here, right? So I was traveling, going down to the city for women's conferences, and and it just, like, let me on fire to be surrounded by all these incredible people who um, who were not just doing one thing, you know, they were multi-passionate, um, doing all sorts of different uh, career paths simultaneously, and I was like, we need something like this in, in our community, somebody that can, you know, rally behind people's goals and mm -hmm. give them the resources and the shared networks to actualize those goals. So that, that was it in a nutshell, like just the, the sheer, I guess, just determination that I wanted this for myself. And then while I was exploring this, this line of work, I started to find co-working spaces, female focused, small communities across the country. And I started to reach out to them and kind of get an idea of how they got started and, you know, how they were able to get their places open. And one of which um, was called Sky Oro. And I spoke to Christine and Amanda. They had just uh, raised over 200 grand on I Fund Women, which is a Kickstarter for women. And they do coaching and help you fundraise and crowdsource, essentially. And I picked up the phone and called them. They answered, I asked them a bunch of questions, you know, and after about a half an hour of talking to these girls, they basically said to me, if you are hell, hell bent on doing this, like with or without anybody, and you intend on it to be like a membership organization, a community organization, you're gonna need people behind you. So why don't you, just have an event and have people come learn from you what you want to do, like vision board, share the pitch, whatever it is, and ask people to join you um, prior to opening. And of course, this is like, what are you talking about? Like, no one's going to buy something <laughs> and buy into a place that isn't even built yet. And they were like, right, but like, we've done all this already with no space, with no lease, with really just an idea and like a video reel. And you are, a, you know, you are in your community, you have a business, you have children, like you're already got a network that you could leverage to share this goal with and have them come along for the ride. And, and like, you know, set the bar low. If you get just one person to join you prior to opening, you're going to have the confidence and you're going to be able to build on that momentum. Well, I took them up on that and I started to have events. And within three months, we had raised over a hundred thousand dollars and 50 founding members who signed on to, to open up palette, the first palette. And, on November, uh, I think it was November 8th, 2019, we had a ribbon cutting and opened the space. And it was the most exciting thing because I was I was so supported. So I really did do a lot of, um, 
you know, market research, if you will, if you like, I was going to do it anyway, but I, I allowed people to come along for the ride and be, um, be part of it from the ground up. You know, you're very impressive in all sorts of ways. You have an entrepreneurial spirit. The, the, what's striking me in hearing your story this time is that, that phrase that you said, where I, you said, I wanted this and I just assumed that there would be other people who wanted it too. And I think that kind of daring to trust your own experience and your own needs and saying, I'm not a unique human being, right? There have to be other people. I think a lot of us sometimes doubt ourselves or think, oh, well, I want this, but other people won't, so. Yeah, no, I think it's, I don't know if it was like from an early age, my family and my parents like instilled in me that like, no, like, like you're not alone, but also like, you know, the world doesn't revolve around you. And, um, and so I think that there was a sense of uh, humility and um, maybe a lack of ego. Like I couldn't, I just, I believe that I could not be the only person that was experiencing this sense of um, like wanting to do more with myself, like wanting to have a larger impact, feeling like I, you know, um, can't do it alone. And, um, and just like, you know, I can't be the only person that's going through this. Like we're, you know, such a, such a, you know, it's a great big world. Right. And so, um, and there was a story that I actually thought about a lot of the times in the early days of, um, so I went to this women's conference and I sat down next to this young girl. She was 18. She'd actually skipped a day of her senior year to come to this women's conference. And I was talking to her about like what she was doing and what she was there for, you know, and she's like, well, I am going to go to school for chemistry and biology and I want to, um, create my own lipstick line. And I thought to myself, like, what? Because there's not enough lipsticks in the world, girl. Like, come on, go into something else. Like, you're going to be a biology or chemistry. You could go make tons of more money in doing this. And she goes, you know, but nothing like what I'm going to create. You know, this is going to be mine. This is going to be my brand and my and my uh, chemistry, my makeup and everything. And I was just so blown away by her, her you know, the, her thought process of like, sure, there's room for me, sure, there's space for me to create what I want to create and put it into the world. And I just thought that that was so inspiring. And, um, and I, that was just like one story out of the many stories I heard in that one day of people who, yeah, there are all sorts of types of things that are just like what, you know, sh they were putting into the world, but they were t putting their themselves out there too. And, you know, and I think the big piece of it is like, I don't think I would still be on this path had I not um, gotten the support and the, and the buy-in early on, because it's been really difficult <laughs> and, and uh, you know, challenging. And, you know, I, it was challenging before COVID, right? So um, obviously COVID changed a ton of stuff and, and you know, definitely ch chartered a different course for us. But, you know, I remember thinking when all that was happening and there was like so much uncertainty and everything, I remember telling Marcella, who is my, uh, essentially my co-founder, she's my COO and she's like my entire world um, when it comes to palette. And, um, and she was just like, and I remember early on stages, like everyone's like, oh my God, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? If, if pivot, pivot. And that, that was like the word, right? And I was like, oh my God, we've been pivoting this whole time. Like, <laughs> like, is, is, the, is the art of pivoting. Like it is just, this has been challenging all along. So, and I kind of felt like a little like, oh, so like now everyone's going to like run around and, and, and have to navigate chaos or navigate with all this, you know, uncertainty. And I felt like just prep prepared because I had been dealing with it ever since, like from the beginning of time. Well, I'd like to, to dive a little bit more into that. First, I want to say that that's it's, re it's remarkable. And we have a person that just came on. Uh, I'm, I'm, I think it's a, it's a consulting thing, but just another one because uh, 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 Icons Consults, you know, Women Leading African Robust Financial Group on WhatsApp. So there's, there's a, a group that's out there. Might have put that into the show notes that we, we put there as well. So I just want to recognize those that are coming on. Um, I think what you also said was resonated with me is around... Uh, you 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 make you make this way and realizing that there's got to be other people that are out there, kind of what Kat was was talking about as well, make that observation. And some of the things I've I've shared with not just entrepreneurs but people that are seem stuck, um, that just can't get out of the rut, 
is that um, th they are not the only one that are in these, these, these moments. And are there enough in the community that can build around? And with, a, with an internet community now, we have those that are in a global space that can do this. So my son, um, he's a basketball coach. And so he was trying to figure out how do I start up something that I can do that can actually earn me extra revenue. So he wanted to do a camp. It's nothing, high, you know, everybody does camps. Uh, but what we decided was he was going to do these things, you know, try to build a community online and inside of the, um, you know, the the the, the, nuts, the brick and mortar as well. And he just he just did it. He he find, he just got it together, figured it out, and put it online. And now he's had more people come in because I I told him I said, even though you, you've got a couple people that have won NBA championships that you played basketball with. Um, they have their tribe, they have their group, but you also have your group that are going to follow you because they they just want to follow you. And so as you talk about, you know, you're just leading into the pandemic. And I, I, I'm i one that believes that we are not out of the pandemic, not not because the, the, the you know, the, the virus is still here, which is still out, but more because of, you know, I went to three graduations over the past month uh, for high school kids, and they are traumatically impacted by this, which is going to live with us all the way down. So we're not out of this by any means. We have mental health that's still coming out from, from it. So as you talk about, you know, palette and what you had to go through, I know that you had the, um, you know, the wherewithal, it's, we're always pivoting, we're always doing this, but that's not the mindset of a lot of people. They're just, they didn't, they, they didn't understand or know how to shift. What do you say to those individuals? How do you walk them through a pathway to get them to understand that, yeah, we are always pivoting and you have to take action. How, how, what's your process for that? Yeah. So, um, you know, I really am so inspired and influenced by the people around me. And so the very first thing that I would tell to anybody that is struggling with being stuck or not knowing what to do next is you, you got to, you got to change your surroundings. You know, you're the average, I, I truly do believe this. You're the average of the five people you spend the most time with. And if you are bringing down that average, you might, who is me? And uh, when is it ever going to start going in the right direction? You know, I've been there. We've all been there. So, but you have to be able to, to change the, like physically change the, the, your surroundings. And, you know, I did that drastically unbeknownst to me, but when I moved across the country, you know, I recognized, you know, I can recognize now that this, the atmosphere and the people that I was around was toxic and, and I wasn't being, um, I wasn't being held to a higher regard. So how was I ever going to hold myself to a higher regard? So when I moved across the country and I'm left in this place with nobody, nobody to really lean on or no, no, you know, catch net or whatever, I had to figure out and navigate my own way. So that's like one piece of it. The other piece of it is I am a tough love kind of person. Like I am passionate and empathetic, but when you need to be told to get out of your own way, I'll be the one to tell you. And, you know, my, I can, I can remember so early on during COVID, I feel like I was really, um, showing up in a way that was strong and confident and positive and optimistic and all those things. Um, but behind the scenes, I was like, Oh my God, what is happening? Like, is this really it? You know, because it was a pretty scary time. And I remember picking up my, my the phone and calling my dad. And I remember being in um, like, and at the time we were living in a two bedroom carriage house apartment. I have three kids. Like the baby was like eight, nine months, you know? So I was really, there was really nowhere to go, you know? And, so I remember being in my empty shower tub on the phone with my dad and just sobbing, like, just like, what is happening? I don't know what, like, everyone's looking to me for advice and I have no freaking clue what to do or what to tell them, you know? And he told me, and I, I mean, background is like, I'm from New Orleans, like hurricanes are a thing of like everyday life. And, um, and he said, and I'm, and I'm Katie back home, you know, he said, Katie, you need to pull yourself together. You have three little girls who are watching your every freaking move. Okay. You are not a kid. You are an adult. You need to grow up. People are looking to you and, and yeah, you're, you're going to be this role model. So you need to think about all that you've been through and all the adversity and all the struggle that you have had to go through that we've had to go through as a family. And you stand up, you wash your face, take a shower and get your shit together. <laughs> I was like, okay, you're right. You're totally right. You know? So I think like, I really needed that. That's, that's how I 
that's how I react to, you know, that type of talk, I guess. So, and I get like, not everybody can handle that. Like, I, I think um, maybe even like someone that I know very close, if they were to hear that, they would like just shrivel up, you know, but it's just not the way I don't think of like Southern people, like, especially who have had to go through so much. I mean, we've, we've like to pack up your stuff every year and expect to not come home to it. Um, it has an impact on you. It has a lasting traumatic impact on you. And, um, and so that, that's what I, that's like how I, act, that's how I, I guess, navigate it is to, you know, you can, you can cry, of course, cry, feel, feel all the feels, you know, but you have to really be able to get, gain that perspective that you, you are, you know, this person that can impact change and elicit change and influence change. And so if that's the arena you're going to be in, you got to be able to sustain it. Yeah. Wow. That's good. <laughs> and, um, I, I, I know that, um, you know, as I was, I was trying to write some notes as you were, as you're talking, cause of this is, this is good. Uh, and, um, there are people that, you know, they just, I'll, I'll go for my 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 world of professional speaking, and there were a lot of inspirational class, you know, class or motivational class speakers. That when the pandemic hit, the th the very things that they were talking to people about how to overcome and and these systems and processes that they had in place, they couldn't do for themselves. And so they were they were putting in this "woe is me" type attitude. And I, and my, you can tell my wife, she's, she's like, she heard me ranting around the house. I wouldn't do it outside in public, but um, I was like, what are they doing? Where's, where these, are, this is the time when you need a doctor, you need a doctor when you're sick, not when you get well. And, and so a lot of the fragility that was happening out there was just, it was, it was, it was really irking me. And then they were, they were getting, they were bailing on or, or uh, you know, pushing against my term, which is the new normal. I've been using it like for 25 years. And so I, it, it, but what it did for me was it actually helped me go deeper into understanding and unpacking what I deliver. So I'm very thankful for it because I now have, and, and working with CAD, we got together over the pandemic and, you know, we're working every Saturday morning and we just kind of just having these wonderful conversations that we're now putting on into this, into this, um, this, this space here on, on these lives. Uh, and it really became this robust intuitive ingenuity uh where you know yeah i i had to find the the the, the other four people that were going to continue to to lift me lift me as i could lift a few myself you know I, i'm always I, we talk about this an old african um it was a women's group that was back in the 30s that came up with lifting as we climb uh mm -hmm. and so we we pull you know you got to get around if you have five people you got to get with you got to get with the least three that are pulling you up and then you could pull two but if you got three pulling you, it's like you're saying they're going to pull you down and you can't lift anybody. Up. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. You know, I think I think during during COVID and even now, I, I thought it was the coolest thing. I, I was really inspired by um, I don't know if I'm going to like put this into words eloquently, but we, we had just signed a lease on March 6th to open up a second location of Fallot. So this is March 6th, 2020. I, you know, I think there were rumblings of COVID, but there was like, it wasn't coming. You know, it was just like people were naive. And I was signing a lease, opening up a new co-working space, you know, that was going to be an event venue and people were going to be able to come and co-work. And it was going to be awesome. Just like the first original location. And, you know, the thought, it was like the following week, everything changed. And my landlord called me and he actually came to me and he was like you know we can tear up the we can tear up the lease let's pretend it didn't even happen because like let's just circle back when things settle down and I did I pulled a lot of like experience from my own um life experiences and I'm like it's not gonna settle down this is going to be earth changing not shattering but like things are going to shift in, in indefinitely and I I really did feel like okay this is my time to put my stake in the ground and say like this is this is where I stand and and yeah bring everybody over to me because I'll be able to show everyone how to collaborate and how to community build in times of uncertainty because that's when you need community most yeah. and you know it's easy to say now you know three years later that it was a huge success but it was a huge struggle and in order to stay the course of 
you know, moving forward and pre-selling memberships to this organization. We were obviously sharing like community co-working, co-working physical spaces, but then we couldn't actually be there for and who knows how long, you know? So it was a real, you know, stab in the dark. I shot at the dark and I just stayed the course. And, you know, I was also really, um, what is the word? Like, like almost called to do more when I saw leaders in my community and, you know, community at large completely falter and, and close their doors and go underground. And it was like, wait a minute, you're supposed to be this, this like leading empowering woman in, in, in the female founder, uh, or, you know, like industry and you're, you're closing your doors and you're going to go away and you're just going to like crumble. I'm like, this isn't, this is a disservice to women, especially like women like me who were inspired by some of these awesome um, female founders who were, were, you know, prior to COVID were like, oh, we're, we are all rising to the top, you know? And then, you know, obviously things happen, life experiences happen that people are not capable of rallying for, you know, and their le- their gives, their, their gives, um, their lead, what is the word I'm trying to say? there's an opportunity for a new wave of leaders, a new wave of um, educators and influencers and, uh, you know, just to come into the light. And it's been so exciting to be introduced to new players in the game that are speaking a different tone, uh, putting out a different message that I believe is more holistic and authentic and transparent about the about the challenges of going through that path if that makes any sense um me and Kat can work on that message a little bit yeah no I uh I well there there are two things that I want to pull on one is just the idea of the improv principle of yes and right which means just accepting and building with what exists and so what I hear you talking about what I know John is sort of we've talked about at the heart of your approach and framework is the willingness to fundamentally, first and foremost, accept what is true, and then to say, what can I do with this? How can I build with this? So the the two things I heard in what you were saying, Catherine, is that, first of all, you were clear-eyed about what was happening. You weren't saying, oh, I don't like this, I'm going to pretend it's not going to happen, or I'll just, but, and then you sort of leaned into, okay, well, what can we do in this new environment, given that this is the offer, to use improv terms, um, what what can we create with it? So I love that. And I guess my, my question to you is, um, in terms of this new, as, as one of the things that happens, one of the offers is there's now space, because some people are going away, or some people can't handle it. Um, So these new voices are come out with these new messages. I'd love to hear more about what you think that difference is or what what the new message is that's different. I just think that there is not one way to skin a cat. (laughs) So there is just, there's so many different ways to actualize the same goal and to acknowledge that, you know, who you may be seeing on on podcasts, on television, in your leaders in your community, if those people are not representing you, if they don't mirror what your thoughts are, what your feelings are, if that's not resonating, then you got to find somebody who is, and that that person may be you. So you got to put yourself in in the arena, and you know. And I think that you know, COVID gave everyone an opportunity to really take stock about the about just everything, right? All aspects of their lives. And, you know, not, I'm not trying to like beat down people who weren't able to rally during COVID, right? Because they may have been rallying for some time and then we're at capacity. And when this horrible thing happened or, you know, life sh- or like ch- changing thing happened, they had no more bandwidth to continue doing the work that they were doing. Or, and that's totally fine. Or, but- or just to sort of put a point on that, or they were yes ending something else, right? I know there are a lot of people who are like, oh, I've been going along in this way. And now this is making me realize I have different priorities or I, right. So it's possible that that was right. Yeah. And we can't know. My whole point though, is that there is room for everyone to, to have a place of um, putting whatever they feel called to do into the world. And, you know, my role in all this is to, 
demonstrate that you you can have it all, right? You can do all the things that you absolutely want to do. For me, it's being a successful business owner and having a positive relationship with my husband and not being estranged from my from my children. I believe like you can have all these things simultaneously, but you've got to get help. You've got to bring people along for the ride and you have to be very clear about what those goals are so that they can help you get there um, and, and also hold you accountable, right? So I find that as you continue to uh, achieve these goals or achieve these mile markers in your life that you set for yourself, you may find that there are people um, around you that aren't holding you accountable, right? So like, no matter where you go, you still need people to uh, call you out on your bullshit, right? Make sure you're not getting in too big of a head. Humility is so important. And to make sure that, you know, you still have these like human-like qualities, like you're not untouchable. And I mean, I, I felt really badly in February, March of this year where I was starting to feel like, <coughs> what am I doing all this for? Oh my God, I'm exhausted. You know, like, why is it always me that has to like, you know, rally and, 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 and create the optimism and positivity for people to, um, to demonstrate too. And, and I was exhausted and, and, and it was like, just burnt out at capacity, whatever you want to call it. And so it's important for people, to, you know, you to continue to surround yourself, people who are going to help you keep moving forward. Yeah, I, I have, uh, a few masterminds, you know, cats, one of them on, on Saturday mornings, but I have a few others <clears throat> for that accountability piece. And that is, I don't know. I, I would love to get your thoughts, thoughts on this because I haven't figured it out. <laughs> and, and so I've, I've been working with a client right now and we've been, this is probably our ninth or 10th time coming up this week that I've spoken to a group. They're all in different States. So they're all mm -hmm. the same group, different States. <clears throat> and one of the challenges I, I, push to these leaders is the accountability piece. It's it's what do you know that you need to do based upon what you're going to learn today and then just take one action step toward it to, by tomorrow at 10 o'clock in the morning. And when you do that, get an accountability partner, call them, call them. Don't just pick up the phone, you know, not, not the pen, but the phone like that. <laughs> and, and call them and tell them the, the, the process, the step that you just made. You know, you don't have to tell them everything, but just tell them one step that you made. And then write me, you know, my email address and just, just share with me what that experience was like, right? That's that's all I'm asking. <clears throat> and I'll tell them, I'll tell them straight, you know, um, maybe I shouldn't, but I do, is I've spoken now to, you know, 2,500 of you all throughout the United States and I've gotten 15 responses. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I know stuff gets in the way, but does it get in the way that much that I'm, I'm going to only get 15 responses out of almost 3000 people. So that's the, you know, I would love to your thoughts on that. The action step, because for to me, what it seems is, you know, you've had these things in your life that causes, causes you to take action and you become an anchor for others because they see that and they rally around you. Mm -hmm. So you become that. How do you set the boundaries, your values, so to speak, to, uh, make sure that you are taking self-care, that you are um, moving moving in a direction that you can support others, but taking care of yourself, your family. Yeah, it's it's a it's a tough one. I mean, I think like my most um, like highly valued, you know, um, resource for myself is my time. So you know, I have to really make sure that I'm protecting that. That I only you know say yes to things that are gonna honor that and work with people who are going to honor that. So when you're talking about the accountability piece, like nothing pisses me off more than being stood up at a meeting. Um, and, you know, that's like one thing that is just so, it just like totally irks my nerves. So it's like, you know, I carved out three hours for this workshop or for this strategy call and, and you couldn't show up or you couldn't be there. So I think it's important to, make sure that that's clear when you're working with people, um, like what the expectation is and make sure that they're committed to that. And, um, you know, I think it's really, it's hard, it's hard to find people who are as ambitious as I am, you know, and I'm not saying that like, that's not, I'm not saying like, look at me, I'm so ambitious. It's, it can also be a curse because it's, it is very lonely to, to, um, to be that way and not have the sense of, I just, I just don't ever feel like, I will have the contentment that I am 
seeking. I just, I think that perfection mm -hmm. is an unattainable goal. And I don't know that the definition of success is it's like ever changing. Right. So it's like, I'm just the type of person where it's like, I'm never really going to hit, I'm going to keep on moving my own goalposts. And that can certainly be um, exhausting. So it's important to like, again, like schedule in the things that make me really bring me joy and make me happy and also challenge me in a healthy way. Um, so th that's kind of like my, my take on it. But you know, the biggest piece of it is that the only person that can truly hold you accountable is yourself. So like, do you really want the goal? Do you really want to, um, you know, like say for a goal, a, a goal might be like a make a million dollars in revenue. Like if you really want to make a million dollars in revenue, you're going to have to act a lot differently than you did to get $300,000 in revenue. So it's a different version of yourself, radically changed, you know, scheduling and accountability. And are you willing to do that? Because if you're not willing to do that, nobody is around you is going to support it, right? Because you got to believe that you are ready to make that change. So it doesn't surprise me that, you know, only 15 people emailed you because, you know, there's a book on, um, there's a book called Profit First by Mike Michael, I don't know how you say his last name, but he says the same thing in his book. He's like, listen, this is the platform. This is the program. This is the framework that you should use if you want to in, in, uh, initiate or uh, implement Profit First. And when you do this one step, when you do this first step, I want you to email me. And tell me the story about how you got and how you're feeling. And he didn't get, he doesn't get hardly any emails and he's, he's sold millions and millions of these books. So it just goes to show like human nature is, is, you know, it's, it's a lofty goal to be that, you know, that motivated all the time, um, ambitious and accountable. Like it's, it's chat, it's freaking hard to do that and to stay consistent with it. It's, but most people don't, most people don't don't reach their goals. <laughs> I mean, I don't want to be the downer here, but no, I'm just saying. No, no. It's well, like, I think, you know, it's I think thing too, though, is like people get up on a stage and they talk about all this, right? And they, and they, and I'm a product of this too, because I, I noticed this when I opened Paint and Sip. And then I started seeing all these other paint and sips opening. And then, you know, less than a year after they're open, they're calling me and they're like, oh, do you, would you be interested in buying my studio? I just, I can't handle it. It's just too stressful with my family. And I, I need, I'm going to go in another direction. And that's fine. That's fine. But like, I must have made it look too easy because you thought that this was going to be easy work. You thought that this was going to be something that you would just be able to snap your finger and have success. It's, that's not, that is not how it is. It takes work. It takes accountability. It takes commitment, um, discipline. And, you know, those are the things that people, I don't think have a clear understanding of what that looks like. That's like, you know, I think, and, and you can compare it to like, you're, you're, you seem like a fit guy, right? You like work out, right? You can compare it to that, like waking up at 5 a.m. in the morning, you got to work out, you know? Most people don't want to do that. They want to take a pill. They want to They want to just, you know, like it, it to be easy and it's not easy. So I think it's important to communicate that, yeah, I have a fun personality. I have these awesome successful businesses, but but it takes, it, it's, a, it's so much more than that. It's It takes so much more, uh, communication with all the people around you about the expectations about how how me being successful and me doing all these businesses is going to impact their lives you know i'm not at the bus every day to pick up my kids i'm not every at every event that my uh daughter is performing at. you know so it's like you it takes sacrifice from everybody around you yeah Cool. Um, that's that's good. That's good. I can go all day on this conversation right now. I know. Got I'm like I'm all fired up. <laughs> I'm all fired up too. Uh, do do you want to, we want to play a game, Kat? I was just gonna say I think we should <laughs> play a game. Um, I, I I do have to say you know that I'm I'm sitting here in this room with two exceptional achievers, right? I mean, John, you're a silver silver medal you know, winning Paralympian, like that level of achievement. And then you've done all sorts of other things in your life that I think are, you know, just as impressive. And same with you, Catherine. So I think that drive is just notable, right? It, it is not average, the, the commitment and drive and discipline that you both have. And what, however, we're scaling that, right? Whether we're building million dollar businesses or becoming, 
you know, keynote speakers to thousands and thousands of people or will it will winning, you know, medals in the Olympics. Um, I think at any level with any intention that we have, we can have the same, I, I think your lessons or your insights are valuable, right? Even if I, you know, if I just want to be able to spend more time with my family or I want to write a book or I want to expand my community or I want to get healthier, right? At whatever level, this idea of commitment to yourself, confidence in yourself, and then just sort of see it, you know, going forward and connect, continuing to commit even when it's hard, um, I think is really inspiring. Yeah, well, Kat, you are an incredible <laughs> accountability partner for me, that's for sure. I mean, I can remember when I, I set out to do this thing, like this speech, whatever. And, you know, it's 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 easier said than done. Again, it's like, we wait a minute. That's what I have to do in order to do that. You know, so it's important, to, again, to find the people that are around you that support you and and remind you what you what you set out to do. Yeah. All right. So let's play a game um, as we've been having this conversation. Uh, a couple of things have been coming to mind. One is this idea of yes, anding, accepting and building with what is put into the space. And then the other, uh, Catherine, for me about you is just shared experience, right? And supporting each other and um, traveling together with other folks. So here's the game. Uh, we're gonna have a little talk show here. I'm going to, I'll be the interviewer and you two are gonna be the guests. And what I'm going to interview you about is a shared experience that you've had. So the game is you're just going to, we're going to make up this experience together and you'll just listen to your partner, build on what they said, accept their offers and together you'll co-create this um, experience that you're going to share. So, uh, okay. All right. So I can, um, I could give you an example, John, or if there's someone who, one of our listeners who wants to type in, um, what what was this shared experience? We'll just give you a headline. Um, I'm going to wait for a minute to see if we get anything. Oh, we probably just want to go. I haven't seen anybody. Just go. All right. I've okay. seen a lot of thumbs ups, but I haven't seen a lot of people jump. All right, good. Okay, so here's your shared experience. Um, you both, um, you were shipwrecked on a desert island together and, uh, and you found your way back to safety. You, you got yourself saved. All right, so I'm gonna interview you about your experience on the Desert Island. So thank you for being here. Um, uh, you, you have this uh, wonderful book you've written about your experience. Um, you, what's the title of that book? Uh, you know, the title has been, you know, Shipwrecked, Shipwrecked for Two. Um, the, the, the lived experience of, and live experience of two castaways. Ah, oh, yeah. So Catherine, um, this, this idea of shipwrecked for two, just maybe just start by telling us how did that happen? How did you end up getting shipwrecked? Well, we, we actually, um, there was a, a malfunction in the ship and it started, we started to find water in the, the, you know, the bottom of our ship. And we quickly realized that we were going to sink. And so we started to prepare for, you know, um, how we could get to this island that we saw nearby. And, um, and yeah, John was such a great captain and steward of our, of our lifeboat that, um, that I just took, it, took his lead. Well, you know, but I, I have to jump in because what Catherine did was so amazing. She, she was really trying to keep the ship afloat. Uh, and so she was, even though the, the pumps weren't working, she was down bailing the water out, trying to make us, make us go. And I just, I just knew that if, if we did have to, to bail out of this boat, it was going to be a great time on, on the, um, uh, you know, on, on this Island because, wow. uh, I, I just knew she was going to just, just make it happen. Yeah. Well, it sounds like you were, you know, like she, as she was trying to save the boat that gave you time to get the life raft ready. Right. I love that. And so you were both using your strengths, you know, whichever way it was going to go, you were going to save the boat or you're going to have a contingency plan. John, I just heard you say that you knew you saw in uh, Catherine this sort of personality or this strength that you knew would be helpful on the island. Catherine, I know there was one moment on the island where you all needed food and and you took some initiative there as well. 
Yeah, I mean, luckily, I am. I grew up in a fishing camp uh, down in Louisiana, so I was prepared to, uh, you know, get together with. You know, we were able to get some netting off of the original ship and bring it on to the island. And, you know, we had to definitely, we didn't have any fishing poles or any bait. So we had to work with a lot of sticks and getting some sharp, sharp objects together and uh, spear-like fishing. And yeah, so I definitely had to call on uh, my past experience and fishing uh, teachings of my family to, to get us, get us through. And yeah. Um, you know, it, it was, there was a lot of hard conversations that we had to have, John, you know, about what to do next and how to work together in order to, you know, um, get through this. And, uh, you know, that conversation that we had when it was, it was time that we need to abandon our ship and, you know, go to safety to this island, you know, it was really tough. And I'm just like so happy we were able to, uh, to get through that and talk honestly about our options and, and, and come together on the solution. Um, I, you know, we, we don't have that much more time, but I do want to just, if you would share with me how you finally got rescued. I know you two worked very closely together in collaboration to get yourselves rescued from the island. Can you tell us about that? Oh, Kat, you don't realize we're, we're Zooming live from the island. We oh, <laughs> because turned the island into your beautiful home. You got it wired up. I, I see. Well, thank you so much for being here. It's great to see you. And uh, maybe we'll all come for a visit. We're in our separate rooms. There <laughs> <laughs> you know, are different cabins on the island that you found. Very fancy. You've done an excellent job. Oh, <laughs> <great>. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so much fun. You know, like Kat, you have to, I have got to bring our people down to a show on Friday night, you know, with the Definitely. improv. It's got to be so much fun just watching people, you know, pull, pull things out of nowhere. <laughs> yeah, well, that was delightful. I was delighted. I'm sure our listeners were delighted. Um, anything either of you want to say about other than fun about like what made that work? Well, I'll say something before I ask you that question, which is, I loved how you um, embodied this improv principle of making your partner look good. So you both were not only accepting and building with what each other were doing, but you were making all these positive offers about Catherine was amazing. Oh, John was this fabulous captain. And so the whole, uh, you created this positive, supportive environment which is what you do all the time, isn't it, Catherine? Oh, that's cool. Well, I was really in the beginning, I was like, I just needed the pressure off of myself. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's part of it, right? Well, I think that goes back to what Catherine was saying earlier on in, in her comments, right? Because <clears throat> we want to build and surround ourselves with individuals who are going to take that pressure away from us. But we don't feel that we have to be the only one doing it. Uh, and, and that is, that's how we build and, and, you know, what would you would say an improv cat? Uh, and, and as I use those principles in, in professional speaking, the same thing, trying to build, I, I call myself, they may introduce me, they say motivational speaker. And I'm like, ah, I'm not that. <laughs> and, but I, I call myself uh, truly a facilitator of the brilliance that's already in the room. So that's what I'm trying to, I'm trying to get a dialogue going around that. I love it. Well, I think that, you know, that's a nice place to end maybe, John, because I think that it's something that you and Catherine have in common and that I hope I see, we seek to do too at the MOPCO and with our work in the world, which is make our partners look good and co-create with them, right? You've been talking about depending on others, you make yourself dependable and support, and then together we can sort of co-create in a way that um, is... Uh, to, you know, it's just fulfilling, right? It takes it takes the mm -hmm. pressure off. You you start to have community, and it takes some training sometimes, right? To not be just driving and controlling, especially when you're powerful. But when you open yourself up to that, and then ask for help and and support and give help, that's when we co-create these wonderful things, like you two just did. Yay, Absolutely, thank you. that was super fun. Well, so well, this has been great. Uh, oh, do you have any more closing thoughts? Or no, no, I was gonna. I think I was gonna, just going to ask Catherine. Um, other than palette, anything or, and paint and sip, anything that you want to pitch or anything you want to say, we'll post all of your contact information, obviously, 
Yeah, sure. Um, we actually, at the end of last year, one of our members acquired this amazing e-commerce company called Small Packages. And it's um, the, the pitch is basically like in less than five minutes, you can deploy a thoughtful handwritten note and package to someone that you um, can't get to or want to send love to. And it's just all the all the um, products inside that these boxes are BIPOC owned or women owned products that may not ever see, see the day of like a target shelf or, you know, mainstream um, retail store. So it's really cool and fun. And just to see like how this one member has gone from, you know, working from another company, not getting what she needed, you know, and not feeling fulfilled with that. And now going into the world of entrepreneurship and it's just so much fun. So that's smallpackages.co if you're interested and you can, um, okay. uh, yeah, I mean, I guess I could, I, sh I could, I don't even have a code that I could use, but we could put together maybe a code or discount. Anybody who wants to reach out to me, whatever, just can and um, anything, anything. I don't know what else to say. Thank you so much for having me. I love this. That's fine. Well, that's fantastic. Well, everybody out there, we have been talking with the amazing Catherine uh, Hover. Does that right? Did I say that right? Hover. Hover. Okay, Hover. Uh, hover, Hover, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I will answer to anything, though. So I'm not <laughs> offended by that. <laughs> that late, but then um, So that's it for our episode today on Performance Shift. Uh, we hope you've enjoyed the discussion, gained some valuable insights that you can apply to your own life work. So thank you for tuning in to another episode. Uh, we hope that the conversation uh, with Catherine has left you feeling inspired and ready to embrace change in your own life. At Performance Shift, we strive to provide you with the tools, insights, and stories of remarkable individuals who have overcome obstacles and achieved remarkable success in the face of big change. We believe that by navigating our own moments of change, we can unlock our true potential and transform our performance. As always, I'm John Register, a two-time Paralympic athlete and combat army veteran. I'm joined by Kat Coppett, an organizational consultant, author, and improviser. Together, we have de are dedicated to sharing our expertise and guiding you on a journey of discovery, exploration, and transformation. If you haven't already done so, make sure that you subscribe to Performance Shift Podcast on all the channels, Apple, Google, whatever that you prefer. And, and by doing so, you're going to gain access to all our, our episodes. We are at episode number nine today, so I can't believe it. But we, we were, we're nine in, Kat. It's, it's awesome. Still going. Uh, it's, it's coming. And so find Kat at uh, Coppet, K O P P E T T dot com. And you can find me at John Register dot com. Uh, we encourage you to, again to select that notification bell. Uh, if you enjoyed these the podcasts, please kindly, we ask you to share it with a friend uh, for navigating change. Thanks so much, everybody. We'll see you next week on another episode of Performance Shift. Bye for now. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.